Hey everybody! Well, this is going to be a follow-up video to my King Kong review video from NECA, and if you want to check that video out, I'll put a link down in the description below, and you can check that out. But um, in that video, I mentioned that I kind of wanted to do uh, kind of what they did here on the artwork, where Kong is standing on the top of the Empire State Building. Um, so as I mentioned, here, let me move him out real quick. So on the box art here, I just want to show you, this is probably the best picture, is right on the inside here. Now you can see Kong is standing on the top of the Empire State Building right there. Now, uh, he doesn't come with that building piece. It comes with a lot of other stuff, but it didn't come with that. And so in looking at this, I was thinking, you know, what, I wonder what they made that out of. It almost looks like it's made of wood, but upon closer inspection, I think it might have been 3D printed. You can almost kind of see some 3D print lines in there. So I want to try to replicate that building and have him stand on it, but it's not going to look exactly like that. I, I went to... Uh, Lowe's hardware store and was kind of looking around to see what I wanted to make it out of and um, for some reason since I originally thought it was wood I was going to stick with that so I'll show you uh, some of the parts that I came up with so I was looking around in the lumber section of Lowe's and I found these things this is kind of cool it's like a little semi pyramid shaped piece it's already pre-cut it has this uh, piece of uh, screw sticking out of there and I guess it's probably for maybe the top of a banister I'm guessing or maybe it's the leg of a table, whatever you want to use it for. And then I also found these. They're kind of like these little cornice pieces that you can stick on walls. And so I thought that would kind of make the, the flat part of the base. And then uh, here you can kind of see, I'm not going to use this side. That'll be the bat. That'll be the bottom. This will be the part here. So uh, just drilled a hole through here so that this is big enough to accommodate the screw right there. So when you just put this together, it's going to make this kind of a cool shape right here. So that kind of looks like the top of the Empire State, uh, State Building, even though it's not round. In the picture, it was round, and in the movie, it's round as well. But I couldn't really find any pieces that were cut round. I don't really have the tools to do that. Um, I suppose I could have used maybe a plastic cup and put that on here, and that would probably work. But uh, since the figure is relatively heavy, I didn't really want to uh, use plastic. And, you know, I wasn't really sure if it was going to be strong enough to hold him up, because, like, if I put him in here like this. I'll probably have him facing this way. But you can kind of see how he's going to look. And it'll kind of be uh, probably in scale, or at least close to the scale that they show in the movie, and also the... Uh, it might be a little smaller, I'm not really sure. But I think that'll look kind of cool and kind of represent the top of the building. So, you know, the magic here is going to have to be in how to gussy up this this piece. So I'm going to look through my wood... Uh, well, actually, no, I'm, my model pieces, my extra model parts and stuff like that. See if I can maybe use some styrene plastic to add those, uh, I don't know, those little stripes that they had on here, like the little girders or whatever those are. Maybe find a way to put some windows on here, just paint them black on the inside. The spire at the top, I can probably find different things for that. But I'll have to see what I got and uh, kind of work with it. I already kind of did some sanding on here. And then, you know, by the time you paint this silver with all the stuff on it, you're not going to know what it's made of. But anyway, we'll see how this goes. Okay, so after looking for about an hour at different stuff to try to embellish this thing, I think I may have uh, at least somewhat of a plan. So I'm going to use this kind of styrene plastic that has these lines on it. And I'm just going to cut a strip that's maybe about six of these lines wide and put it right here in the center, like, you know, just a strip down the middle. And then I'm going to take this... Um, styrene plastic which is this rod it's like a square rod and kind of put it like that just to kind of give it a little bit of texture so that it's going to have so just picture about you know six lengths of those uh, lines along with this in the middle it's just going to go you know the length of the uh, side of the building i'll have it right down in the center and then on each side you know they had windows on the the one that we saw in the uh on the box art and i couldn't find you know porthole looking windows so what I'm going to use is I'm going to take these googly eyes that I had left over when I was making those pig puppets. And I'm just going to put them like here. Hopefully I can get it to stay on so I can show what I was going to do here. I'll just put two on uh, each side. Now I know this looks silly because it looks like it's got eyes. <laughs> but I'm going to have them like this. And then I'll have that strip down the center. And I'm going to paint these black so they're just going to look like black domed uh, windows. And I think that'll look pretty decent. And then um, <laughs> those eyes have come in handy quite a few times. 
Uh, let's see, another thing I wanted to do is, um, let me put that back on. So I wanted the plane to fly by Kong. So I'm going to have Kong, he's going to be, let me see if I can get a hold of him here. I'm going to have him over on this side, like this, and I'm going to have the plane flying over here. And the reason I have to have it that way is because the gunner is has got his gun name that way. I, I, it would be more realistic to have it this way so that the gun is actually facing him. But I need it to be kind of like opposite. So, um, so I'll have uh, Kong here. And then the plane is going to be on this side. And I'm going to use, to hold it up, this piece of clear plastic. And this is a piece of leftover sprue from a clear a bunch of parts from a model kit. And I'll have to cut down these little nubs and sand them down smoother. I think I might dip this in future floor wax to kind of make it more clear. And I'm going to probably put a hole in here on the side at kind of an angle like this. And then I'll uh, hot glue. I'll have to shorten this. But I'll, I'll hot glue the plane on here. Let me see if I can get a better view of it here. So I'll go like this and maybe over here. And it'll look like the plane is flying by. So I think that's what I'm going to end up doing with that. And then, let me see. Oh, for the spire, I'm going to use this leftover piece of dowel um, from a video quite some time ago that I did where I made a diorama for the Black Hole Vincent and Bob figures. And I ended up scrapping it and making another version of it. And <laughs> these were leftover pieces that I used for those... Uh, the big propane looking tank things on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put this on top. I'm going to have to shorten this down maybe about half half the length or maybe, uh, well here you can't even see it, but I'll make it for about half the length, uh, maybe a little longer than half. And it's, everything's going to be silver anyway because the whole thing is just silver. And then um, I think I'm going to use that black tape again just to put those on there once it's painted silver just to kind of add some, some kind of detail on there which I think will be cool. And then I found this little clear dome that was left over from another model and I'm going to sand down the little lip here on the on the bottom of it. I'm going to put it right here on top. Now I know that the light, the building uh, on that diorama wasn't uh, um, lit. I know it didn't have a light on it. I don't even know when they started putting lights on the top of buildings. Was that, was that a thing back in 1933? <laughs> I'm not really sure. But I, I'm going to paint that a uh, clear red, like the Tamiya clear red, just to make it look like it's a light. And then that will be the spire. So I think that'll be pretty cool. And then I noticed there was some um, rivets that they had along the uh, different parts of that little edge of the building. Well, I'm not going to be able to find anything that looks that small, but I'm going to use these things. They're these little domes that you can, uh, they're iron-on rhinestones is what it says. I found these at Hobby Lobby, I think a long time ago and I think I'll just put some of these along this bottom edge down here and maybe about six of them per side just to kind of give it a little more detail. I mean once everything's painted silver you're not going to know what any of that stuff is and <laughs> I think it'll look kind of decent. So anyway uh, let me start uh, cutting some of these pieces and gluing them on and we'll see what we got at that point. Okay so just a progress shot going on here. So I've cut the uh, styrene plastic sheet pieces and then the square rods. I decided to add an extra rod on each side uh, just to make it you know a little more interesting looking because um, before it just had that thing in the middle. And so yeah I got all these done on each side now. I'm just letting these dry. I just used Gorilla Glue for these. And then uh, these, these are the eyes that I painted. I painted them black and then I put a gloss coat on there to make them nice and shiny. And so these are going to go uh, right in the middle. I think I'll put them right in the center. There's going to be one on each side here, and that'll look like the windows. And that'll, uh, you know, make it look like there's some kind of a window there. And then from there, I think I'll start gluing on those little dots along the edge here. Um, you know, it looks like grain is going to show, but that is really smooth. So I hope, hopefully, not too much grain is going to show. I'm going to put a primer coat on this, so hopefully that will hide some of it, and also a sealer. But anyway, so uh, that's what I got done so far. Okay, so I got some more work done now, and I'm about done now as far as the building part of it. I think I'm going to uh, start painting this tomorrow. I gotta let everything dry. So um, I did glue the uh, top and the bottom together. I just used Elmer's wood glue. That stuff is like cement. It works really good. I did put all the little dots on the bottom now just to kind of make it look 
Um, you know what the thing about this building is it has to look kind of uh, art deco. I mean that movie came out in 1933 and it was usually I think it was like at the peak of the art deco movement or something you know around that time and so as much as I had other pieces that I could have put on here it would have looked a little too modern. In fact this fire I think was I don't know I think it still has somewhat of an art deco look. So as you can see here I did change my mind on the spire instead of using that wood dowel I actually found this thing it's a metal piece and <laughs> what it is is I was wandering around Home Depot and I happened to spot it. It's a it's a pole it would have a little chain that was attached to this and it's a pole for a ceiling fan. You're supposed to just use it to turn the ceiling fan on and off. So I just snipped the um the chain off <laughs> and I think it looks kind of cool. I think it looks kind of like a, a neat little piece that should go on the top of a building. So I just centered it on there and, and uh, Gorilla glued it in. I think for that hole on the top to get rid of that I'm going to take another one of these little beads or these little dot things that I put on here and I'm just going to put a red one on the tip and make it look like there's a little red light up there. And so now all I got to do, uh, well I just got to paint it. I'm going to put, um, I think I'm going to use this. I'm just going to use the Tamiya Surface Primer. Um, I know it's for models, but it works good on wood too, because I've tried it before. And this paint here is really good. It's Vallejo Hobby Paint, and it's silver. And I've used this before, and it works really, really good. So I'm going to use that as the actual color for the uh, the whole thing right here. And then let's see the eye, uh, eyes, <laughs> the uh, windows. I'm going to put on probably at the very end. Um, so here is the plane, and I got the acrylic piece here all glued on. I used hot glue on here. I didn't want to use regular glue because uh, if I ever decide to take that off, um, you know, hot glue is a little more forgiving. It might still peel some of the paint off the bottom of the wing, but I can always, you know, repaint that if I have to. But, uh, you know, I was going to uh, also think about putting a, drilling a hole in the side and putting it in that way, but um, I just don't want to accidentally uh, mess up this plane because it really is pretty cool. And so um, this piece was a piece of sprue. I clipped off all the extra pieces that were sticking off uh, of it and then uh, dipped it in future floor wax about four times to get it more nice and clear like that. Uh, the tip didn't matter because that's going to go on here. So uh, here, let me um, let me turn this around. Now this is probably still drying. I have to be a little careful with it. Okay, so you'll notice I drilled a hole right there in the side. Let me put the camera down here. All right, so this plane is going to go in here. And I'm just going to put it right inside, right here. And I kind of made it at an angle. So it's going to go in at a bit of an angle like this. And sorry about that. Let me get this put in there. And it goes in nice. Okay, and now, you can see here, the plane is going to be on that clear piece. And uh, there we are. So now it looks like it is flying by. And I think that'll be better than having King Kong holding it in his hand. I, uh, since we didn't really actually see it, well, like I said, we did see uh, in the review video, I mentioned how um, it was in his hand when he grabs it by the wing. Oh, maybe it was this video. I don't remember. <laughs> They're all starting to run together. But anyway, yeah, I think that looks pretty cool. That clear piece kind of gives it a nice little illusion of flying, and it's far enough away but I think that's pretty neat. I think that's going to look really good. And I'll put Kong over here in the corner and I'll have his hand hanging onto uh, the spire here. And that's what's going to be able to keep him on here. And I'll just have his feet on each side there. All right. So, yeah, this is turning out pretty decent. So all I got to do now is paint everything. So we'll see what it looks like when I get all that done. OK, and here it is all complete now. And I got to say this turned out looking pretty decent. Um, better than I thought because I, I kind of went into this rather blindly but uh, I gotta say it looks pretty good that building just having that little bit of a, a diorama right there really does add to it um, you know I do think that the the building they show on the cover of the uh, the box art is a little bit misleading because it does make it look like it comes with that piece and I know they were doing it you know to make it look you know really cool and to market the product but you know, if they're going to provide the plane, why not provide the, the building? I mean, it was just a 3D printed thing that they did on the um, the artwork. I mean, well, here, we can kind of take a look at it here. I'll try to get the artwork in here. So now you can kind of see the original building, how that kind of looked. And it was just a round building. So, you know, I mean, uh, I, like I said, I could have used a cup or something to make the top of the building. 
but you know, I just found that square piece and I thought, hey, that's kind of the right shape. You know, it had a flat top and it was kind of cone shaped. And, and then I found that cornice piece that kind of matches it. And it's almost exactly the right scale that it needed to be. And so, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think this building ends up looking a little bit more modern than it probably should since uh, that other building has more of an art deco feel to it. But I think it turned out pretty good for the most part. I mean, once you put some silver paint on here, it really changes everything. So uh, yeah, I just did a, a, the primer coat, the silver paint, um, and then I put a sealer on it. It's Krylon sealer, and that really kind of helps take out some of the wood grain. So you, I mean, you almost can't even tell that this thing is made of wood. When it hits the, the light a certain way, you can maybe see a little bit of wood grain, and I could have gotten rid of that if I just sanded it more. But a lot of times you don't see that until after you've already painted everything, and I didn't want to really go back and redo it again. But, you know, there's just enough of a platform here for Kong to stand on, and then I used the uh, the main post there in the middle, the uh, the spire, for him to kind of uh, hang on, because he, he would fall back otherwise, so it gives him something to grip onto. I decided to go and use the open hand, so it makes it look like he may be reaching out to try to grab the plane when it comes around the front. Somewhat of like an action scene right there, but I think it looks pretty cool. So let me give you a closer look at it. Okay, so looking at this a little closer now, we can kind of get a better look at this. That sealer, like I mentioned, does help hide the wood grain. You can still see a little bit of it, you know, if you look at the edges here. But, you know, for the most part, I think it really does a good job of hiding it. I really do love the way this plane looks like it's flying right there. And having it at an angle is kind of cool, you know, it makes it look like it's kind of banking across the top of the building. Um, a little bit of wood grain showing on the top and some down here, but these kind of look like they might be claw marks from Kong's big feet, so <laughs> a little bit of realism there by accident. Uh, I do like the little red light beacon on the top. Would have been cool to maybe put a light in there, but I don't know. Thinking about wiring it and all that, I mean, that's certainly an option for those of you who might have the, the uh, ability to do all that, but, you know, the illusion of it there is, is pretty cool. But yeah, I think overall, this thing turned out pretty good. So there we go, a fun little project just to make this look a little better, a little more realistic, inspired by the artwork from the box. Uh, so once again, this King Kong figure was from NECA, and I got him at Target. Uh, just go to their collectibles section. It's usually over by their electronics stuff, and it has all kinds of really cool stuff over there, um, Funko Pops and everything else. There was three or four different versions of Kong. This is the one I picked from the original 1933 movie. Um, mainly because he comes with a lot of really cool accessories. The plane was being the being the biggest one. He also has the cool wrist cuffs with the chains, the real metal chains on here. Two different heads that you can pop on and off. This one has the movable uh, mouth. He has three different hands that you can choose from. So he comes with a lot of really cool stuff. It just just needed that. I think that would have been really cool to come with it. I would have paid a little extra how, to have that piece along with it. But anyway... Um, if you want to make one of these, just go to your local Lowe's or Home Depot, get these wood pieces, or make it out of a cup. I think I probably would have preferred, actually, to make this out of a plastic cup turned upside down. Uh, just make sure it's wide enough, has the same kind of dimensions. That would have been uh, lighter, cheaper, but I just wanted this to be solid enough for him to stand on, because the figure itself is relatively heavy, and also because... Um, in my mind, it looked like originally that that building was made of wood, and that's just kind of stuck in my head. But everything else you can just find, like these googly eyes, the little dot things that was all from Hobby Lobby. Like that, uh, like I mentioned, that is a fan pole, a chain pole for the uh, ceiling fan. I just found that at Home Depot also. And so, yeah, just let your imagination run wild and have fun with it. All right, well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a like and subscribe also. I'd really appreciate that. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. So thanks again and have a good one.